Hi, my name is Peyton Dagg, and welcome to Project Strange. I don't know much about engineering or physics, and I'm on a mission to learn from industry professionals about what it takes to design the structures we see around us, whether it be our apartment buildings or the bridges we cross on the way to work. To figure out how to measure things, we got to know where our measurements come from. Today's episode is about SI units. History. Evidence for measurement systems has been found to date as early as 6,000 years ago. Such systems, however, varied greatly over the years and between each civilization. For example, some were based on the size of a man's foot, like in ancient Greece, or the length of a man's forearm, like in ancient Egypt. Since there was no internet or social media to share and educate others on the systems of measurement, each civilization had their own system. By the time the French Revolution rolled around in the late 1700s, the number of units of measure had grown to the extent that it was nearly impossible to keep track of them. The revolution allowed for the Age of Enlightenment in France, during which our modern system of measurement was born, the metric system. Did you know that Napoleon Bonaparte was not as short as we thought? The common misconception around Napoleon, and what has led to the widespread idea of the Napoleon complex, a shorter man with an even shorter temper, is that Napoleon was below the average height in France. He was rumored to be five foot two. Bruh. This, however, is false, as the French inch at the time of his rule was 2.7 centimeters, and the imperial inch was 2.54 centimeters. This means Napoleon was technically above average height in France in the early 1800s, making him about five foot six. Anyways, scientists saw the flaws in systems that were based on the human body, which can vary greatly from person to person. Two French astronomers, Jean-Baptiste Delambre and Pierre Michain, introduced the idea of the meter. Delambre and Michain were appointed by the French Academy of Sciences in 1791 to conduct a survey to determine the length of the meter, with the aim of defining the meter as one ten millionth of the distance between the equator and the North Pole. Their work, written in my notes as the Delambre Michain Arc, helped in the creation of a universal and consistent measurement system. This system became known as System International, or SI units, and continue to be used today in structural engineering around the world. My friend Ian stopped by to elaborate on how he uses SI units in structural engineering. The interview. What is the meter convention and what are SI units? Well, the meter convention was an international treaty established in 1875 and in Paris. It was signed by representatives from over 17 different countries and the purpose of it was to establish a standard measurement unit. Over the years, they created an international organization which was in charge of the accuracy of said standard units. And that organization created what we call the International System of Units, or more commonly known as the SI units. Well, the Meter Convention was that international treaty that established what the SI units are going to be. For instance, they established that seconds are going to be the international measurement. Oh my gosh. Woo. International measurement of time. Kilograms are going to be the international measurement of weight. Meters are going to be the international measurement of distance. How do we use the meter convention in everyday life? Uh, we use the meter convention uh, every time you measure how you much. You can take it from the top. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> That's the best way to make sure it doesn't fall down, though. You use SI units every time you step on a scale, uh, every time you look at a clock, every time you look at the speedometer of your car. Anytime you measure anything in the everyday world. Why did you want to be an engineer? I'm not even really the engineer, I'm the surveyor. Bruh. What does a surveyor do? A surveyor is responsible for accurate measurements. So we're really responsible for laying things out accurately in the right spot. We're responsible for recording things that are built incorrectly. Uh, and then transferring that onto paper in a submission form to our clients. Now, measurements typically include distance and elevations. We survey the structural, the structures that we're building or that okay. people are engineering, right? Pretty much uh, if anything goes wrong, we're there to blame. Have you ever taken the blame for something disastrous happening? No, I am much too responsible to ever have anything disastrous happen. What's the worst thing that's happened at a construction site? Death. I've been on a construction site when somebody has died, and then they shut down the whole site. Are you scared of dying? <laughs> Very much so, yes. Should I be? Are you scared of dying on the job, like what you do? No, I'm the office manager. You're way too good at this. 
Whoa. All right, survey this tower. What would you do as a yeah. surveyor yeah. if this was a build? I would measure its base uh, so we get its existing location. And then I would knock it down because it does not look structurally sound right now. So you personally wouldn't live or send a loved one to live in a building like this? Certainly not a loved one. The opposite of a loved one, I could potentially see myself sending them there, yeah. You have enemies? Ooh, nice. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. So I was in Fort Bring Murray, and right after I left, God saw fit to set fire to Northern Alberta and burn down Fort Bring Murray. Seems like chaos follows you around. Yeah. Man. I just survey, man. I'm just there to, to measure things. Use those SI units. I think you're in a losing situation here. Oh! Well, thanks, Ian. Nice. Perfect. Did you get that? So basically, the SI units are a system of measurement used in nearly every country in the world. Ian mentioned three of the seven base units, seconds, kilograms, and meters. Here are the other four. Units named after people are written in uppercase such as the Kelvin being named after Lord Kelvin. A special thank you to Ian for teaching me about SI units, and a special thank you to you for watching until the end of the video. I hope you learned as much as I did. While you're still here, like and subscribe to learn more about structural engineering with me. My name is Peyton Dagg, and this has been another episode of Project Strange. Don't forget to enjoy the process. Craziest story I have from out west is a girl got eaten by a bear on the job. <laughs> Wait, what? On the job? What yeah. was she doing? So these oil sands are huge, right? They're just like giant plots of land, uh, which is mostly just straight wilderness. So this girl was out doing whatever her job was on her own yeah. in a pickup truck and she got out of the truck and it was springtime. A bear woke up from hibernation. That's really scary. Did she survive it? She did not. <laughs>